Welcome back to LEC Summer after this match of the week. And what a game it was, Miki. Thank you for joining me. That was the most bloody game we had actually since summer started. 52 kills total. Did you expect Rock to take you there? Uh, no, usually when you play Rogue, they're kind of slow games and you kind of just farm for late. And even though this one took like a long time to actually so we close it out, it was like very broadly early game, which usually doesn't happen with Rogue games. But yeah, I guess with the Kalista draft that they had, they kind of had to snowball early game. And then, well, they got us level one already or level two, but then we got them back because the junglers are very balanced. So, yeah, we had there was a lot of back and forth going on. Yeah, I was about to say they set the tone with the Kalista in the draft, and I mean it was very action packed, especially in bot lane since the beginning, as you said. So, talk me through the early game plan and how you navigated through this bot lane because you needed to shut down Kalista in the end. I feel. So yeah, f at first of all, we wanted to get a ward on the Raptors, but they kind of pink warded it, so at least we kind of knew, knew where Fiddle started, and he started bot side, and our rumble passing towards bot. Uh, us dying level 2 was not part of the plan, but, well, they wanted to push out the wave after they killed us, then rumble was there in time and got the kill on Kalista, and then we had a huge wave, and Fiddle was top side, so we kind of just dove them, like under tower, or at least zone them from minions, and then we got some TPs as well, and yeah, it's kind of how it went down, um, but yeah, I guess the early game plan was just to kind of track Fiddle, uh, try not die to his <laughs> full clear ganks, and yeah, survive both, in which it didn't really go as planned, all but right. we salvaged it. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, uh, were you in control the whole game? Because as you said, it was pretty long, a lot of kills, as I mentioned. So did you have it or were you scared you would lose it? Uh, I wouldn't say that we were in control because, I mean, the champs were just really scared to play against. Like we usually had control the bot side of the map, and then they had control the top side. So whenever we, the Baron was up, we were like really scared to walk there. Like Phil can ult from everywhere. You can get Blitzcrank hook through walls. Cannon could be on a flank. So like we had to have a lot of things in mind when we wanted to actually retake. And our champs were not the best face checking or retaking because we didn't really have any front line. So it was definitely a rough game, and the Baron still kind of helped us. But I think after we got the Baron, still. That's where we kind of got control of the game, I think. Yeah, and the Viego plays uh, afterwards. You mentioned the Blitzcrank. Uh, you didn't hear it, actually, but I had a quick chat with Freddy uh, right after the draft, and I mentioned the missed ban, and he actually told me that he intended on banning Thresh, maybe, which you picked, and they had the answer to uh, the Blitzcrank answer. So what did you think about this champion in this setting and how annoying it was? Okay, so first of the missed ban, I mean, it makes sense that they would ban Thresh because yeah. it's, it's kind of a strong champ and a good bind pick. Uh, I didn't really expect him to pick Blitzcrank though because no one really played it uh, last split. I think maybe I was the only one that actually played it. So I just assumed that EU supporters don't play this champ. So I was a bit surprised, but it makes sense with Kalista. It's like a pretty decent 2v2 lane, like the Ballista combo. <laughs> uh, I think overall, Blitzcrank is one of those champs where you can't just flip it. Like you either hit the hook or you don't, and you might be like the most broken champion in the game, or you're gonna, or your team's gonna have to play 4v5 if you miss everything. Um, but I guess Kalista kind of makes up for that with her ult, so you're still useful even if you miss all your hooks. Mm -hmm. But I think overall, yeah, I think he played well this game. Like he hit a lot of pretty good hooks, but it's still like Thresher just a more versatile champion, I think. So yeah, I was just more useful, I think, just because I have Lantern, and <laughs> yeah, that's kind of my job. Yeah, Thresh has been OP for so long now in the LEC, it's actually crazy. And uh, I, I want to talk about you and your role, actually, Miki, because Vedius had a segment about you earlier today, and he mentioned how you were roaming a bit more than in spring, even though it doesn't translate to very good early game stats for G2, but I want to ideate on that. Uh, do you feel stronger than in spring? And can you tell me about this new style that you're thinking about, maybe? And how is it going to make G2 stronger? Yeah, so, I mean, I guess... I'm mostly, I'm trying it out because with the addition of Nelson, he like gave me a lot of good things and ideas to try out. And well, I guess roaming earlier on is one of those things because most of the time, I just, whenever I based, I just kind of either went bot or maybe through mid, but I never considered like maybe going top lane. It takes too much time, my carry will lose too much. But in some situations, like he explained to me that, well, in some situations it's just really good for top and usually your AD carry can't get punished for it if someone can at least cover him. And, and I guess that's kind of why I do it, but even, yeah, Com I mean, compared to Spring, I think every support does it a lot more. Maybe it's because at MSI, I think a lot of supports were doing it as well and people just kind of watched that and picked it up. But I think uh, it's kind of an 
LPL thing where support just kind of like or go all around the map since like since the first base, which yeah is a lot different from spring. I think um, I don't think it's very particular to me. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's like I'm the only one who does it in EU. I think everyone kind of does it. Maybe my room has worked out. Actually, now that I think about it, probably not. I don't think my rooms were like that crucial. But, you know, at some point I'll just take over the game by roaming like 24-7 and not show me late at all. I think also another decent thing by roaming this early on is your AD carry gets all XP. And on some champs it's bad if I don't get level 6 first on Rakan. But like if I'm roaming with Brom, I don't really care what level am I. So... Yeah, that's another benefit of it, I guess. All right, well, thanks for all these insights. And actually, you're doing it more than the other supports in the league, but I'll get you some stats on that. And we'll need to hear about Nelson, because I heard so many good things about him. But for now, uh, Miki, thank you so much for this interview. Congrats on winning Match of the Week, and have a good weekend. You too. And we're going to take one last break for the week, and we'll be...